back to Doggerman. We're here about to risk Ragnar's life, I guess. Wait, I'm going with the drip aficionado? Damn, of all the Quansei, especially just like the red-headed one. But, <coughs> five minute warning. Whatever you don't grab now, you will have to do without. Do I even need to bring anything? I figured I'd, it'd take you no time at all to kick the hex's ass. Then if it's back to this miserable hole to continue my sad life. There's no telling how long it would take, so better get moving, little fishy. <sighs> That's why my extreme annoyance is slowly trudge to my room to deliberately take my time as I gather my things. I spent a long moment pulling myself together before I, head, before I head back to the party room. Were you packing or solving a highly complex equation? I was contemplating Ray Raymond's hypothesis. Uh, couldn't you have looked it up with your 7th grade textbook? I don't even know who that is. What? He's either a complete doofus or his jokes are paper thin. I bet it's the former, though. Basti, who has been watching us argue, sighs. You're just so noisy. Whatever, we're leaving so you can continue hibernating in peace. Basti, you better stay start praying for my soul now. Machiko's going to drive me to sin. You're right. She's about to. Finally leaving the party room, Basti leads us through a pool into a door. Have a safe trip. And you, don't get sick. Not knowing what else to say or do, I make a funny face so that Basti might remember it should I meet my untimely demise. Upon walking through the door, the sight outside upsets me a little. A train station, really, and it's filthy. I've been spending so much time in the muter rooms lately that I actually that actually stepping into the real world now makes the contrast even more obvious. Oops. I pulled up my calculator on my screen. The muter rooms are almost always immaculately clean. Take my room, for example. There's no speck of dust anywhere. The air is always frequently fresh. But now I have to fight the urge to wrap my scarf around my face. The muffled foul smells wafting around me. Except there seems to be a different list of odious fragrance mixed in with the stench. It's slightly spicy and a bit exotic. Ragnar. <laughs> the scent. Must you walk around with your chest exposed like that? Mm, is that a problem? A huge problem. I feel chilled to the bone just looking at you. Ragnar shoots me a condescending glare, then turns his attention to his film while I glance around anxiously. With how tall this oaf is, for sure to attract all kinds of attention, which I simply don't have the patience for today. Let's go. Where? You'll see. What a completely in-depth and thorough answer. <laughs> my girl's now a smartass. We begin to walk and I notice something that engages me to the very, my very core. You took your hookah. Is there a reason I shouldn't have taken it? We have been we have been through a lot together and are you sure you go through even more? Do you have something against my dear friend here? <laughs> Ragnar hugs the water pipe gently against himself which has me slapping my forehead in disbelief. This trip is going to be great, absolutely great. A few minutes later, I find myself annoyed yet again with another of Ragnar's quirks. Hey, can you slow down? I'm practically dragging myself along for your sake. Well, I'm practically having to run you run after you. Can you walk like a normal person? One of your strides is as long as ten of mine. I'm tall. I have long legs. As long as a giraffe's? You're just jealous, and now you're freaking out. Given no other choice, I snort loudly, then hurry after Ragnar. Are we there yet? Another couple of miles. Miles? Ugh, can't wait to, like, grab a taxi or something? I'd even settle for a bus. I want to explore the city, and I want to rest. I'm tired, and I've been lugging this heavy backpack the entire time. Hey, we can finally see our girl. Yeah, she definitely looks annoyed as shit. But hey, cute CG art in a way, kind of. Right in our size, looks at my bag, then at me. Where's my bag? I don't have a bag. <laughs> and skips me up under his arms and carries me like a toy dog. As we pass by the by a construction site, I begin to scream in the hopes that one of the orange vested workers might come to my aid. Let me go, you mummified clown! Unhappy again, are you not satisfied with Ragnar's transportation service? No, I am not. Thank you for the feedback, it's been ignored. <laughs> Even the construction workers are ignoring my screams. Jerks! And so I resign myself to being carried in the vain hope that Ragnar might get a tire and hail a taxi, or in the very least take this backpack off my shoulders. But right now, showing no sign of fatigue, continues on until we stop in front of a house. Only then does he set me down on the ground. How many stories do you see? Four. We walk around the building, then Ragnar asks again, How many now? Five? It doesn't add up, does it? For some odd reason, I'm having a hard time focusing on this building, and so I, ha uh, so I hazard a reluctant guess. Is the ground at level? Look closer, and try to focus, really focus this time. My temples ache a little, but I force myself to concentrate on what I'm seeing. They're so slow. Let's go. Ragnar heads for the door and fascinated by this new mystery, I quickly follow behind. An intercom. <laughs> I can't wait to see how you handle this epi that epidemic. Epidemic? 
Easily enough, Ragnar takes a drag of his hookah and blows a steam of stream of smoke towards the speaker and the door opens. What the crap? First, how the heck did you get any smoke out of that thing? It's not even lit. Second, are you not forbidden from displaying your magic and full view of the entire world? And last but not least, are you a freaking burglar or something? No one saw a thing. Well, obviously, so I wasn't expecting you to use your abilities like that. This sucks. We climb the ability to the third. <laughs> the ability. We climb the stairs to the third floor, and our resident burglar uses the smoke to access the hallway. How many apartments are there? Two. Are you counting carefully? Ragnar grins and lets out, an lets out another puff of smoke which fills the entire foyer. My apologies for the intrusion, but you will not be able to see our destination unless I do this. Approaching me from behind, Ragnar tenderly takes my chin in his hand and gently turns my head to the side. Oh, that's so cute. What the fuck? He's lucky I, wanna I want to get to the bottom of this mystery. Otherwise, there's no way in hell I'd allow him to place his filthy hands on me. Don't close your eyes. Look. I can't see anything. Then let's try this. And it moves me forward, staring me towards a wall. And absurdly, we continue to walk until my nose almost touches the pink. Can you still not see it? I see a wall. You don't see a door. No. Neither do I. But it's there. <laughs> what? Ragnar laughs loudly for reaching out into the air and pulling as if he'd had taken hold of something. What is this murmured farce? Watch the smoke. I'm comfortable with how cheeky Ragnar has been acting, as I mentioned his overly close proximity. I look down at the floor, only to cry out. It's moving! Like it's flowing into the wall. But that's normal, right? For your smoke? There's more. Ragnar holds out his arms again, and it goes right through the wall. Now concentrate on my hand. When I focus on it, the wall disappears. Close your eyes. I'm so intrigued that I don't even bark at the way Ragnar is brazenly ordering me around. He whispers into my ear and I don't even don't know if it's his breath on my skin or proximity to my body, but I'm starting to feel a little lightheaded. There's a door there. Feel it. Believe it. You saw my arm go through. There's no wall. It's merely an illusion that your mind clings to, preventing you from focusing on it, distracting you. Now open your eyes. I obey and Ragnar gently pushing me through the wall. If he hadn't forced me forward, I doubt I would have gone on my own. My gut was screaming at me to turn away. I didn't even want to look at it, let alone walk through. My ears feel as if they're plugged up and I begin to hyperventilate as I panic, but the sensation quickly passes. Alright, we're in the scary doll room again. We're in an apartment, but not your normal one. There's water everywhere, but there's something different about it. We're walking right on top of it without sinking below the surface. Like there's something just beneath holding us up. Looking down, I realize that I can't see the bottom. This is incredible, and an endless abyss of water. These windows overlook the courtyard, where you count of four floors. It's like a muter room, but the apartment doesn't look like one. Places such as these are called muter rips. They occur when an altar is unable to finish devouring the entire contents of a given area. Can I touch anything? I point to one of the many half-sunken objects. I don't see why not. There's no, there is no danger. Dying to see what happened if I pull an object from the strange water I lean over and grab the arm of a doll that's sticking up through the surface. I gently pull until I notice a slight resistance as if something were holding onto it. With a little more force, I'm able to successfully extricate extricate the plaything from its captivity, then watch with fascination as the curious water reluctantly fills a hole in its wake. A very curious water indeed. The doll is completely dry and smells of a sunny day, not the expected mustiness of a moisture soaked object. What about the people? Please tell me I won't be singing the bodies. The hex have taken them, so there is nothing to fret over. Besides, those who have been taken don't look like corpse. What do they look like? What you are holding right now? Whoa! <laughs> I would drop that thing so fast. This co comment is so startling that I instantly dropped the doll, and once it's back in the water, it freezes in the exact same position that I had found it. Realizing that he was speaking vigorously, I continued questioning Ragnar. So then the bodies don't appear dead. Yes, for them, time is frozen forever. What about Quanzi's? If a Quanzi does not resist, he will meet with the same fate. Ragnar is acting surprisingly serious right now, which is making me nervous. I carefully sit down and try to sink my head into the water, only to once again feel the resistance of an unknown force. Noticing what I'm doing, Ragnar sits down beside me. It's the same as the doors. You have to believe it's really water. Ragnar lowers his hands as if it were normal water, easily breaks through the surface's tension. Can you breathe under there? No idea. You've never tried. Ragnar looks up at with a hint of sadness in his eyes. As a Kwanzi, I have only survived this long due to an overwhelming sense of self-preservation. I would advise you to do the same. <laughs> my girl is stupid. She's like, let me dunk my head in here. This guy, he just seems so sad. Does he really feel does he really feel for the people who used to live here? So like, why does your organization allow all this to happen? Doesn't Ayn have anyone he reports to? Ragnar chuckles truly, and I know I'll never I'll receive no answer. 
Okay, that's enough chit chat. It's time to get down to business. Wait, before we start, can you at least tell me what we'll be doing? It bugs me to no end that you never explain anything. Since I'm too lazy to argue with you, to put it blunt bluntly, I'll hide my presence so that the hex can send you an attack. Very likely immediately. So you're using me as bait? Of course, why else would it bring you? What if I don't want to be your bait? Then it's a good thing I didn't include your wants in my plan. Reiner sits down on the floor and begins puffing on his hookah. Starting to panic a little, I ask him to give me a quick briefing in the event something goes wrong. But he doesn't say anything. Not knowing what else to do, I just anxiously pace back and forth until the smoke completely envelops Ragnar and he disappears. What the hell? Why do these jerks always shove me in dangerous situations without a means to defend myself? Do they not care about my well-being? Frantically searching the room for a weapon of some sort, I spot a chair and arm myself with it. At least it's something, but I almost drop it when a sharp pain pierces through my temples. Like a song that's stuck in your head, but you can't remember the artist. Only it's amplified a hundredfold, and has been playing for years and years, but you still can't place it. It's excruciating. The first time I had faced the hex, they had come from the deep. Thinking back on the now dangerously irrational urge grips at me. Even though it's insanely frightening, I want to look down into the water. Something is approaching. Oh god, here we go again. I gotta be scared again. Ragnar, where are you? No response. Why are you hiding from me? Gripping the chair tighter, I nervously move around the room looking for something that might help me. That is when I see something white emerge through the surface and I scream with terror. Oh god, I'm ready. Ragnar, the situation is out of freaking control. More silence. As I wait for Ragnar to do something, I'm able to get a good look at what has come up from water. Fingers. Unnaturally white fingers. Crap. Looking down into the depths, I see a square of white fingers. Hundreds of them. But I don't do something, I'm a dead woman. And since, I, since being dead is a part of my plan, I need to do something fast. Alright, she's saying a bunch of words I do not know how to pronounce. I don't want to end up like that poor doll. But I can't see the door to the apartment. Frustrated and enraged, I throw the chair over to where Ragnar should be. But I was expecting nothing, and now I've lost the one thing I had to, to protect myself with. With no other options available to me, I grab the triangle around my neck, grip, grip the metal tightly, and cry out. Basti, I need help. This is an emergency. Please save me. You can use my body if you want, a hundred times if you need. I can hear you, so you can stop shouting. Don't worry, everything's fine. Nothing will touch you. This is all part of Ragnar's plan, so just be patient for a bit longer. He's an idiot, and, this plan is cr and his plan is crap. I could have to run around in the room while shouting in the triangle. Maybe freaking out will confuse the hex, and they won't grab onto my legs. No, they don't give a shit. I was ready to keep away from the PC fingers that reached toward me. I jump onto the couch as I watch the water swarm with pale bodies. Ew. This looks like one of those horror movies about sharks. Basti, I'm going to die. Do something already. It's under control, don't worry. And then slowly but surely, this self begins to sink into the water. Basti, before I die, I just want you to know that you're a jerk and so is everyone else. I didn't need to say that. Oh, why am, I be why am I such a drama queen? Although maybe I wouldn't be one if the situation wasn't so ridiculously dumb. It's a good thing the hacks are so slow. At least I have time to contemplate my miserable life which has ended far too early. But today is not the day. When the sofa is finally about to fully submerge, a fall begins to swirl around the room. It all happens so quickly and I don't really understand what is happening. Then in a single moment, the water around the sofa turns scarlet. Is that the Hex's blood? How horrific! You were so hilariously jumping up and down and yelling that I could barely concentrate. Yo, he kinda- he didn't die compared to Ryu. Ryu looked fucked up. Fiddling with his hookah, Reiner emerges from the smoke. You bastard, why did you do that? Because I felt like it. I wished but instead of my girl freaking out, which is obviously the- correct choice in most scenarios i wish he like tried to focus on her like try to bring out her quasi powers in some some sort of way because she does have it they said she has it she's just also like able to be a huge support as well i shoot daggers at the man he responds by calmly holding out his hand you can come down now don't put your filthy pipe at me so rude clearly courtesy is a foreign concept to you right now return to leave the apartment good thing i didn't get to see the creepy face again that, that would have just screwed me foreign concept. It's obvious to me that the idea has never once entered that head of yours. Grumbling, I hurry after Ragnar, who is nearly to the door. Once we are through the through and door closes behind us, Ragnar presses his large hands against the cool, cool metal. Smoke then wafts from his fingers and turns it into a black substance. Substance before seeping through the cracks in the doorway. What are you doing? Hold on. I yawn while brooding over how sick I am of watching something, yet again, that I don't understand. Having finished his magics, Ragnar drags me out of the front of the building where he finally speaks. Now count the floors. Five, and we're on the side where I counted four before, right? Right. I return the space that the Hex had stolen from the human world. But what will others in the apartment see now? What, 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 what will others see in the apartment now? Time will resume in its natural course and catch up with the present chronologi chronology. 
chronology chronology Chron why is that word giving me a hard time <laughs> which is very abandoned and dil dilapidated apartment that has long sat empty can you return what was taken by the hex only what has remained behind in the muted ribs i still don't understand the difference between muted rooms and muted ribs what do you mean muted rooms are safe muted ribs are bad <laughs> muted ribs are owned by the hex muted rooms are not She's stupid. <laughs> if the altars were there, then the space must have become active. And if that's the case, then how does any of this even work? I have no desire to explain any of that to you. If you're looking for answers, direct your questions to I. I have been a, I have been a deer for long enough today. He honestly has. Thank you, Ragnar. I like this route a little bit better with this story section part. Not my girl being a total bitch half the time. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.